when Judgment Day begins. There are lots of events on Judgment Day. And one of those events, when humanity is gathered, they're gathered and they don't know where to go. They don't know where to turn to. This is actually a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that the Muslims were eager to learn. And some people came and they ran over to Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu because it was known that he knows this famous hadith. It's a very long hadith. And it's narrated in Bukhari. So they go to him to learn this hadith from him. And so this is after the passing of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, حَدَّثَنَا مُحَمَّدٌ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ This is Anas talking رضي الله عنه. He says, the Prophet told us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ مَا جَنَّاسُ بَعْضُهُمْ فِي بَعْضُ Listen carefully now. When the day of resurrection starts, people are going to be in waves, crashing into each other. Chaos, everybody's running into everybody else. فَيَأْتُونَ آدَمَ And they somehow find Adam alayhi salam. They somehow find Adam alayhi salam. Humanity runs to Adam alayhi salam. فَيَقُولُ اشْفَعْ لَنَا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ They run to him and say, Could you please speak to Allah for us? We are too scared to talk to Allah. You are the first human being. You are the one that Allah honored with the, the angels doing sajda. You are the one that was chosen. You are, we are all your children. You are our father. So go speak with Allah for us, please. We are too scared. So he says, فَيَقُولُ لَسْتُ لَهَا He said, I am not qualified for that. I can't do it. لَسْتُ لَهَا وَلَكِنْ عَلَيْكُمْ بِإِبْرَاهِيمِ He says, you know what, why don't you go talk to Ibrahim? You need to go meet with Ibrahim. So humanity is now searching for who? Ibrahim alayhi salam. فَإِنَّهُ خَلِيلُ الرَّحْمَانِ He says, go to him because he was the close friend of Ar-Rahman. وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا Quran says Allah took Ibrahim as a close friend. So go talk to Ibrahim, he will help you. Ibrahim alayhi salam they go to فَيَأْتُونَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ فَيَقُولُ لَسْتُ لَهَا They go to Ibrahim alayhi salam, he says, I'm not qualified for that, I'm not made for that. I can't talk to Allah Azza wa Jal for you. وَلَكِنْ عَلَيْكُمْ بِمُوسَى Why don't you go to Musa alayhi salam? So humanity runs to Musa alayhi salam. فَإِنَّهُ كَلِيمُ اللَّهِ He was the one who used to talk to Allah a lot. وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Quran says that Musa alayhi salam used to talk to Allah in long conversation. So he's already used to speaking with Allah. Today is a good day to speak with Allah. Go talk to Musa, he'll talk to Allah for you. فَإِنَّهُ كَلِيمُ اللَّهِ فَيَأْتُونَ مُوسَى فَيَقُولُ لَسْتُ لَهَا He says, no, I'm not, I'm not qualified for that. I can't do it. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِعِيسَى So go... Go to Isa alayhi salam. فَإِنَّهُ رُوحُ اللَّهُ وَكَلِمَتُهُ He is the ruh given by Allah. And he is the word of Allah. كُنْ فَيَكُونَ He is the word of Allah that miraculously was born. So he is a special case among all of the messengers. Go speak with him. فَيَأْتُونَ عِيسَى They go to Isa alayhi salam. فَيَقُولُ لَسْتُ لَهَا He says, I can't do it. That's not for me. That's, I am not made for that. And then he says, وَلَكِنْ عَلَيْكُمْ بِمُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. No, you need to go. Humanity, you need to go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Humanity is going to Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَيَأْتُونِي فَأَقُولُ Then all of them will come to me and I will say, now the Rasul is telling us alayhi salatu wa sallam, أَنَا لَهَا I was made for this. I was for this. I am qualified for this. أَنَا لَهَا فَأَسْتَأْذِنُ عَلَىٰ رَبِّي And by the way, before I tell you more, there's a scene on Judgment Day. Allah says, يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ صَفًّا لَا يَتَكَلَّمُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَذِينَ لَهُ الرَّحْمَانِ وَقَالَ صَوَابًا He says, the day on which angels, the legions of angels are going to be standing like an army. And a time will come where nobody will be allowed to speak. There will be a kind of silence that has never been heard in humanity before. Never in existence has there been that kind of silence. Allah says, لا يتكلمون Nobody is going to be talking. They will not be speaking. إِلَّا مَنْ أَذِينَ لَهُ الرَّحْمَانِ Except the one that Allah will give permission to, Ar-Rahman will give permission to. And that is Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he comes before Allah azza wa jal when no creation of Allah can make a noise. No creation can be heard. He comes before Allah and asks his permission to speak. فَيُؤْذَنُ لِي and so I will be given permission. And he says, وَيُلْهِمُنِي مَحَامِدَ أَحْمَدُهُ بِهَا لَا تَحْضُرُنِ الْآنِ He says, Allah will give me on that day a special way to praise Him and a special way to thank Him that He has not given me now. Some special revelation will be given to Rasulullah wasallam on the day of judgment that has never been given before to any creation. And he will get to praise Allah in that special way on that day. لا تحضرني الآن He hasn't given, they haven't come to me now. They, they're not here yet. فَأَحْمَدُهُ بِتِلْكَ الْمَحَامِدِ Then I will praise him and thank him with those special words that Allah himself has given me. وَأَخِرُّ لَهُ سَاجِدًا And when, I, when he gives me those words, after I say those words, I will fall before Allah in sajda. 
So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is now in this scene. It's called, this place is called Maqam al-Mahmuda by the way. A place that, a station, you could call it almost like a stage that is praised. And humanity can see it. They can, we can all see it. This conversation, we're all quiet. And he falls into sajda. And when he falls into sajda, Allah Azza wa Jal speaks to him. He was speaking to Allah, now Allah is speaking to him. And what does he say? Ya Muhammad irfa' ra'sak. He says, Muhammad, raise your head. Get up from sajda. And he says, Waqul, speak. Yusma'lak. You will be heard. And he won't just be heard by Allah. He won't just be heard by Allah. He will be heard by everyone on Judgment Day. Yusma'lak. And he says, Wasal, tu'ta. Ask, you will be given. Whatever you ask, you will be given. Can you imagine a creation of Allah on Judgment Day? What creation of Allah is in a position, we are all begging Allah. On Judgment Day, atmim lana, nurana, waghfir lana, complete our light, forgive us, cover our sins. This is what we're begging Allah Azza wa Jal. And here Allah is saying, not to, to this one creation, instead of him begging Allah, Allah is telling him, you go ahead and ask, whatever you ask, I will give. Sal tu'ta. So this is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sal tu'ta. And then he says, washfa. If you want to speak on somebody else's behalf, you want to make a case for somebody that I should be lenient with them, go ahead and make the case to shaffa. I shall give you the right to speak on other people's behalf. To shaffa. This is the, the, the guarantee Allah has given His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَأَقُولُ يَا رَبْ So I will respond, my master, ummati, ummati. That's all he will say. That's his entire sentence. My ummah, my ummah. My people, my people. Everyone on Judgment Day says, Nafsi, Nafsi, me, me, me. Prophets of Allah who begged people to come to the deen, like Ibrahim alayhi salam, who in this world was only concerned with humanity, on Judgment Day says, no, go, go somewhere else, go talk to Musa. Musa alayhi salam who's concerned with Banu Israel is saying, no, go talk to Isa alayhi salam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And by the, think about the description of judgment day in the Qur'an يَوْمَ تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ Every mother who's feeding her baby will drop her baby like it's nothing Like it's nothing يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ A person will run away from his brother, from his mother, from his father وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِي From his wife, from his children Some of you run from your wife already so it's not that scary for you well <laughs> <laughs> That's not the scariest ayah for you, you know. And some of you are like, finally, you know, like. <laughs> but all serious, in all seriousness, everyone's concerned with who that day, themselves. As a matter of fact, one person will even say, "Woman fil ardi jami'an thumma yunjihi." Ya Allah, take everyone on the earth, let them go to hell. In exchange, let me go to heaven. That's in the Quran too. That's how humanity becomes. And on that day, the one human being speaks before Allah Azza wa Jal and the first words that come out of his mouth is Ummati, Ummati that is the love your Rasul has for you Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam My Ummah, My Ummah and if we love him how is it I, I remind you of something I told you before how is it that he has that kind of love of this Ummah and we can have hate for this Ummah how is that? how is it that we can have so much anger, judgment, criticism, division spite, you know, assumptions Arrogance towards each other. And these are the people, they, they all claim they love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How is that love not enough for you to get over it? What differences do we have that are bigger? You know? And so, when the Messenger says, Ummati, Ummati, Allah responds, فَيَقُولْ انطلق. He says, go forward, go ahead. فَأَخْرِجْ مِنْهَا مَنْ كَانَ فِي قَلْبِهِ مِثْقَالَ شَعِيرَةٍ مِنْ إِيمَانٍ Listen to these words, he says, go, take out from it, Whoever had had even one, one, the sha'ira is actually a barley seed or a barley, you know, grain. And it's a little bit long. If they had even that much of a weight of faith, any faith inside them, any iman in their heart, if they had that, take them out. Take them out. You go ahead and, and you can imagine this scene. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calling people, go, 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 go. And he's getting them to move. And now the angels stop. Because some people had even that little bit, what does that little bit of faith by the way mean? Somebody was engaged in haram, was it, weren't they? They were doing something terrible, weren't they? And as they were doing it or after they were done, they felt a little shame inside. Something inside them said, this is wrong, I shouldn't be doing this. 
Allah will ask me about this. And they somehow found a way to, I mean, not think about it. And later on, they're, Ya Allah, just get me out of this haram. I don't know how I can get away from this addiction. I don't know how I can get away from this situation. I don't know how I can get away from this evil. But I don't want it. I don't want this in my life. But I'm still stuck in this evil. That little bit of faith inside them was screaming and crying. Nobody could hear it. Their heart could hear it. And Allah Azza wa says, if they even felt that much, that much, go ahead, get them out. You get them out. And so when they're getting, he's getting them out, the angels will basically stop because some people don't even have that much. That little voice is not even there. So they stop. فَأَنْطَلِقْ فَأَفْعَلْ I will go forward and I'll do so. ثُمَّ أَعُودْ Then I come back. Meaning no, the, you know, the angels stop. There's other people still crying back there. What about us? What about us? And so he comes back to Allah Azza wa Jal. فَأَحْمَدُهُ بِتِلْكَ الْمَحَامِدِ And I'll come back to Allah and start praising Him with the same words He had given me before. Notice in this hadith, the first time He asked Allah's permission, yes? The second time there's no mention of permission. You see that? He actually immediately starts praising Allah Azza wa Jal. Did Allah even ask him to do so? No. This is his love for his ummah. That he goes back and he starts praising Allah, hoping that Allah will just grant him automatic permission. Begging him. And ثُمَّ أَخِرُّ لَهُ سَاجِدًا Then I will fall before Allah in sajda. فَيُقَالُ يَا مُحَمَّدٍ Then it will be said, Muhammad, إِرْفَعْ رَأْسَكْ Raise your head. وَقُلْ يُسْمَعْ لَكْ and speak, you will be heard. Wasal tu'ta. Ask again, you will be given again. Washfa to shafa and make a case for people. You will be given the opportunity to, to, to get them out. You will be given the chance to be their ambassador. Fa'akulu ya rab ummati ummati. He says, My master, ummati, ummati. The, the, them again. Them again. But he already got the people with this tiny little iman. So Allah says, فَيَقُولُ Allah says, انطلق, go ahead. فَأَخْرِجْ مِنْهَا مَنْ كَانَ فِي قَلْبِهِ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ أَوْ خَرْدَلَةٍ مِنْ إِيمَانٍ He says, go find anybody and get them out from it that may have the weight of a single speck, a dot. Not a seed that's long, but a single dot. Or خَرْدَلَةً A mustard seed. A mustard seed is a tiny little seed. And when Allah says weight of it, nowadays we have these digital weighing machines, yeah? And so you, you, back in the day, they used to have these weights. So when you put a handful of rice, it doesn't move. When you put more rice, then it moves a little bit. But now you have these digital things that are kilograms and grams. And you can put a couple of things and it says 0, 0, 0, 0.001 gram. Try putting one piece of rice or one seed and see if it catches anything. It doesn't. It doesn't. And Allah says, I will give this access on your name, on Rasulullah's pleading, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to those who have this that cannot even be weighed in this world. That cannot even be weighed in this world. By the way, if you ate one seed, would you even notice? You wouldn't even notice. You know what? This is the kind of faith that even the person who has it barely notices. Even they barely notice. What to speak of someone else? What to speak of someone else? And if somebody consumes one seed, it cannot nourish them, it cannot feed them. That's not enough food. This was not enough iman for someone to live a good life. But it was somewhere in their heart, some recognition of Allah, some element of gratitude, some element of mercy, some element of loyalty, something was there in there somewhere. And Allah says, even if you find that much, فَأَخْرِجْهُ فَأَنْطَلِقْ Then I will get him out. And then I, I move forward, فَأَفْعَلْ And I will do so. And now that those people, that's a huge population of people who are away from Allah. They had barely something left inside. And so that's pretty much it. I guess the story is over. Rasulullah is not done, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He goes back, فَأَحْمَدُهُ بِتِلْكَ الْمَحَامِدِ ثُمَّ أَخِرُّ لَهُ سَاجِدًا I will go back with the same praises and fall before Allah in sajda again. فَيَقُولُ يَا مُحَمَّدِ ارْفَعْ رَأْسَكَ Then it will be said again, raise your head. وَقُلْ يُسْمَعْ لَكَ Speak, you will be heard. وَسَلْ تُعْطَى Ask, you will be given. Allah Azza wa could easily say, you already did this. It's already been given. It's already been given. But this is now the third time Rasulullah Wasallam is being told, وَشْفَعْ تُشَفَّعْ Go ahead, make a case for people. And you will be given the opportunity to do so you shall be granted a chance to intercede on their behalf, plead on their behalf. I'm giving it to you. فَأَقُولُ يَا رَبْ أُمَّتِي أُمَّتِي He says, أُمَّتِي أُمَّتِي Now, let's stop here for a second. If you had the opportunity, Allah would say to you, you can have whatever you want. You ask, it'll be given. Whatever you want. We have a list. We have a list. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has been given that opportunity now how many times? Three times. And how many millions of people have been saved already? 
And the third time, at least he could ask something for himself. A human being, when they're told by Allah, ask, I'll give you. And this man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, standing before Allah, who's telling him, I will give you whatever you ask, and still on his tongue is this ummah. Ummati, ummati. So he says, فَيَقُولْ انطلق, Go forward. فَأَخْرِجْ مَنْ كَانَ فِي قَلْبِهِ أَدْنَى 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 مِثْقَالَ حَبَّةِ خَرْضَلٍ مِنْ إِيمَانٍ He says, go forward and find someone who has the smallest bit of the smallest bit of the smallest bit of one seed of faith. The, the kind of bit that is, you would call that microscopic. If they have one atom, one subatomic particle of faith that can't even be seen or heard or felt in this world. If they have it somewhere, somewhere deep inside their subconscious, they haven't even ever realized it. If they even have that much, go ahead and get them out. You bring them out. If they have that much in their heart. And so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَأَخْرِجْهُ مِنَ النَّارِ Allah says to him, فَأَخْرِجْهُ مِنَ النَّارِ Get them out of the fire. Listen to these words carefully. Get them out of what? The fire. Meaning some people are already in the fire. You know, people read this hadith and they think we will be saved on judgment day, the fire will not touch us. But the hadith doesn't say that. The Prophet ﷺ is pleading to Allah, this day is 50,000 years long. Some people's judgment is already done. They're already in the fire. They're already there. And I told you about that fire. When you feel one split second of its air, you think no worse torture has ever happened to you. And some people are already inside. And Allah's Messenger has not even given up on those people. Not even given up on those people. And by the way, those are Muslims. Those are Muslims. Because what did the Prophet say? What words came out of his mouth? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ummati, Ummati. Those are Muslims in the fire. Those are not non-Muslims in the fire. Those are Muslims in the fire. And he's begging for them. And so he says, فَأَنْطَلِقُ فَأَفْعَلْ So I go forward. فَلَمَّا خَرَجْنَا And by the way, so Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi says this. And the hadith is done. Anas ibn Malik was done telling these, this group of people who came to learn from him. قُلْتُ لِبَعْضِ أَصْحَابِنَا I said to some, the, the, the one who came to collect this hadith, said, I told some of my friends, لَوْ مَرَّنَّا بِالْحَسَنِ وَهُوَ مُتَوَارٍ فِي مَنْزِلْ أَبِي خَلِيفَةً Maybe we should go to Hasan al-Hasan. We heard this from Anas. We've also heard that the other one who knew it is who? Al-Hasan. So we should go to him too. And by the way, by this time, Anas radiallahu anhu was very old. In this hadith, how many times did he go to Allah? Three times. So they said, it's been a while, and we learned that this hadith is also learned by Al-Hasan. And they've never heard anything like this. It's so shocking. So they want to verify if they're going to hear the same thing again from who? Hassan radiallahu anhu. And we hear he lives behind the house of Abu Khalifa. Let's look, find him. So they're going around looking for this sahabi. And so they find Hassan radiallahu anhu. فَحَدَّثْنَاهُ بِمَا حَدَّثَنَا So we told him the same thing Anas told us. حَدَّثَنَا Anas ibn Malik. فَأَتَيْنَاهُ فَسَلَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِ So we came to him, we said salam to him, فَأَذِدَ لَنَا So he gave us permission to come and speak with him. فَقُلْنَا لَهُ يَا أَبَا سَعِيد We told him the father of Sa'id. جِئْنَاكَ مِنْ عِنْدِ أَخِيكَ أَنَسِ بْنِ مَالِكِ We came to you from the company of your brother, Anas ibn Malik. فَلَمْ نَرَى مِثْلَ مَا حَدَّثْنَا فِي الشَّفَاعَةِ We have never experienced anything like what he told us that the Prophet will do on Judgment Day, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَقَالْ هِي He goes, mm-hmm. <laughs> He literally says, yep, you know it. And so, فَحَدَّثْنَاهُ بِالْحَدِيثِ And it also means, let me hear it again. Let me see what you learned from Anas. So they told him the whole hadith, the one I just shared with you, yeah? فَانْتَهَا إِلَى هَذَا الْمَوْضِعِ So they fin- he finished telling him the hadith until this point, three times. فَقَالْ هِي He said, more? What else? فَقُلْنَا لَمْ يَزِدْ لَنَا عَلَى هَذَا He said, he didn't say any more than this. This is all he told us. لَقَدْ حَدَّثَنِي وَهُوَ And so he says, now Hassan is speaking, he says, لَقَدْ حَدَّثَنِي وَهُوَ جَمِيعٌ مُنذُ عِشْرِينَ سَنَةً He told me this hadith when he was in his youth, in his prime, 20 years ago. He told me this hadith how long ago? 20 years ago. فَلَا أَدْرِي أَنَسِيَا أَمْ كَرِهَا أَن تَتَّكِلُوا I'm not sure if he forgot the rest of it, or he didn't want to tell you, because if he tells you, you people will get lazy. He says, there's a fourth part of this hadith. And I'm not sure if I should be telling you. Or he, he wasn't sure. And I think because he's 20 years older now, maybe his memory is failing him. But I suspect he didn't tell you because you people will become what? Lazy. So they say, Ya Ba Sa'id, hadithna. Okay, can you tell us? You know, 
We'd really like to know. So he started laughing. فَضَّحِكَ وَقَالْ خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولًا he, he quoted ayah of Qur'an, he said, human beings were created loving to rush to things. They want to get things quickly. مَا ذَكَرْتُهُ إِلَّا وَأَنَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أُحَدِّثَكُمْ حَدَّثَنِي كَمَا حَدَّثَكُمْ بِهِ I didn't make this comment to you, except that I wanted to tell you. Actually, I was teasing you, I will tell you. Okay, so I'll tell you exactly the way he told me how many years ago? 20 years ago. قَالْ ثُمَّ أَعُودُ الرَّابِعَةِ He said exactly what he told you is true. But then, ثُمَّ أَعُودُ الرَّابِعَةِ The Prophet says, صلى الله عليه وسلم, Then I go back for the fourth time. فَأَحْمَدُهُ بِتِلْكَ الْمَحَامِدِ Then I praise Allah with those special praises and thanks that Allah has given me on that day that no creation has had before. ثُمَّ أَخِرُّ لَهُ سَاجِدًا Then I fall before him in sajda. فَيُقَالُ يَا مُحَمَّدْ إِرْفَعْ رَأْسَكْ Muhammad, raise your head. وَقُلْ يُسْمَعْ لَكْ Speak, you will be heard. وَسَلْ تُعْطَى Ask, you will be given. وَشْفَعْ تُشَفَعْ Ask for people behalf, on people's behalf and you will be granted. Now, at this point, there is no, some, nothing smaller than that much iman. So all the possibility of iman is done. Adna, 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 mithqala habba, it's, it's done. So, فَأَقُولْ يَا رَبْ يَا رَبْ إِئْذَنْ لِي فِي مَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ Rasulullah did not say ummati. He did not say this time, ummati sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Ya Rabb, give me permission in the case of anybody who accepted La ilaha illallah. Anybody who even said it. If they just say, okay, fine, you know what? I think there is a God. Fine, you know, some college student was having a discussion with some Muslims on campus and they talked to him about God and said, you know what? I can, I can agree philosophically, maybe there is a God. Okay, you know what? You're right. I accept there is a God. I'm not saying I'm Muslim. I'm just saying, okay, maybe only, if there is to be worship, there's going to, there's got to be only one God. They don't have this feeling in their heart. They're not worshiping someone. They just came to this conclusion. Okay? And by the way, this is similar to what Allah describes in Surah Al-Hujurat. When He says, قَالَتِ الْأَعْرَابُ آمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا The Bedouins say, we have iman. Don't tell them you have iman. Tell them you don't have iman. You've just accepted the premise of Islam. The ideas of Islam. Ideas are over here. Iman is where? Over here. The whatever's in the heart, the people who had something in their heart have already been taken. Now the people who may have had some concept that there's a God, they never practiced it, they never did anything with it, they just kind of admit, submitted to the idea that only one God should be worshipped. The Prophet says, anybody who came to this conclusion, who said, La ilaha illallah, said this, فَيَقُولُ Then Allah will say, وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي وَكِبْرِيَائِي وَعَظَمَتِي I swear by my authority. I swear by my own glory. I swear by my own greatness. And I swear by my own magnificent being. لا أخرجن منها من قال لا إله إلا الله. I will take out myself whoever said لا إله إلا الله because you said this. صلى الله عليه وسلم. I started somewhere. I started how scary hellfire is. And now by the end, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم is making this شفاعة for us. You know. This hadith is one of the most important hadith and you'd see, uh, you know, even, even 20 years later and Anas ibn Malik is an old man and people are searching for this hadith and coming and we heard something about shafa'a we want to know. And even today, this hadith is one of the most powerful and one of the most misused statements of the Prophet ﷺ. Don't ever think about misusing it. This is not a license that we will be freed as you can tell, right? When we listen to this hadith carefully, we learn that this is Allah allowing His Messenger وسلم, to get people out of Jahannam that were actually not, their iman wasn't enough, their deeds weren't enough.